Hi everyone, deflation is the persistent fall in prices in an economy in a year. It's the complete opposite to inflation and it occurs when the inflation rate is negative. Now that sounds like a great thing because if prices are falling, consumers can purchase goods and services cheaper and therefore boost their living standards. Their income can go further, their purchasing power increases. And for businesses it seems like good news because if prices are falling, their inputs become cheaper, their raw materials become cheaper and therefore they can widen their profit margins as their cost of production fall. Sounds like a great thing but it's not as simple simple as that. Yes, that could happen, but equally, deflation can be very, very bad. There are two types of deflation. We have demand-side deflation and supply-side deflation, but other terms for them. Demand-side deflation is often known as bad deflation. Yes, that is a technical term. You've got to love the innovation of economists, right? Bad deflation, also known as malignant deflation, whereas supply-side deflation is known as good deflation. Hmm, very nice, innovative term by economists. Again, good deflation, technical term. Also benign deflation, harmless deflation. So there are those terms that come with it. On a diagram, we can see that demand-side deflation just occurs when AD shifts to the left. Supply-side deflation occurs when SRA shifts to the right. So simple stuff there. But why do we say demand-side deflation is bad deflation in theory? Well, we can see from the diagram, when AD shifts left, there's our reduction in the price level, P1 to P2. That could be our deflation. But we can also see that this comes with lower economic growth. But also, the major issue is that we assume that from demand-side deflation, deflation could be long-term and anticipated. An assumption but it's likely. Why? Because if AD shifts left, and let's say a recession is caused in the economy, recessions don't just go away like that. They take time. They last for a while. And therefore, if deflation is resulting as well, that could last at the same time. Even though there are policies to boost AD out there and to get economies out of recession, they take time to work. So deflation could be long term here and therefore could become anticipated, expected. Whereas we say the opposite for supply side deflation, so here we can see our SRA shift to the right. We know why that could happen, a reduction in cost of production for firms in the economy. We've covered this many times in my playlist already. We can see the reduction in the price level, P1 to P2. That could be our deflation. But why do we say this one is not so bad? Well, we can see that it comes with higher economic growth. But also we say that this type of deflation is more likely to be short term and therefore unanticipated, not really going to last and seep into people's mind. Why? Well, look at some of the reasons why SRS could shift to the right. Maybe lower raw material prices. Well, raw material prices might be low today, but in a couple of weeks, they could easily go back up again and therefore take away the deflation. Maybe there is a strong exchange rate, so the price of imported raw materials has decreased which has led to this deflation potentially. Well, again, exchange rates don't stay strong forever. They could weaken soon and take away that deflation. Um, so a lot of those factors won't necessarily last in the long term and therefore this deflation might not last for the long term. And that's why this is seen as not so bad, better for the economy. But the deeper issue is whether deflation becomes anticipated or unanticipated. Unanticipated deflation is beneficial. Short term deflation is good news. Long term deflation, anticipated deflation is really dangerous. Now we are simply making assumptions here, guys. It's not like demand side deflation is always going to be long term and therefore always going to be anticipated. It's not like supply side deflation is always going to be short term and always going to be unanticipated. It could easily be the opposite. This could be long term, maybe. This could be short term, maybe. We're just making some assumptions according to what economists tend to say in theory. But really, the deeper issue, the crux of the issue, is deflation anticipated or is it unanticipated? That's the key thing. If it's anticipated, deflation is dangerous. It could lead to a deflationary spiral. Let's understand why. Well, one major issue is that rational consumers are going to delay their spending. Why would you buy now if you know that in a couple of months' time, prices are going to fall even further? In which case, buy when prices hit their rock bottom. That makes logical sense, doesn't it? But that's bad news for the economy because then consumption is going to fall now. That's going to reduce AD. How a business is going to react, they're going to slash their prices, discount. That's going to make deflation even worse. But the deeper consequence is not just a deflationary spiral, deflation continually happening in the economy. It's that when AD falls, you get lower growth and higher unemployment. Horrible. You could argue worse consequences for the economy. Another issue is that when there is deflation, Real interest rates will always be positive. Okay, real interest rates is just the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. 
Now, interest rates can only really fall to 0%. So even if the central bank cuts interest rates to 0% to try and stimulate the economy and promote more inflation, interest rates will always be positive in real terms. And here is why. So let's say that uh, interest rates are 0%. Nominal interest rates are zero. Well, let's say deflation is 2%, minus 2%. The real interest rate is going to be the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, which in this case is minus 2%. Zero minus minus 2% is a positive interest rate of 2% in real terms. So the real interest rate is still positive at 2%. And that makes logical sense because even if you're saving money with a 0% nominal interest rate, that money is gaining value if prices in the economy are falling, right? The uh, value of that money is going up. The purchasing power of it is going up. Even if it's not getting any nominal interest rate, it can actually go further in buying goods and services if it's just parked away and prices are falling in the economy. And if that's the case, if interest rates in real terms are always positive, the incentive is to save instead of to borrow and consume or instead of to borrow and invest if you're a business. Saving makes more rational sense. What's that going to do? Well, if there's more saving and less borrowing for consumption and investment, AD is going to reduce even further. We get more deflation, but worse, we get lower growth, higher unemployment, deadly consequences. And another major issue is that when there is deflation, it increases the real value of debt. Ouch. Why does that happen? Well, when prices are falling in the economy, profits for businesses and incomes for uh, workers are going to be falling at the same time. Why will profits fall? Well, if prices are falling, firms are making less revenue and therefore that's going to hit their profits. But also if consumers are delaying their spending, firms are not going to be making as much profit. So there's that issue for businesses. And for, for workers, their incomes are going to be falling. Why? Because firms are making less profit, but also prices are falling in the economy. So lower incomes are fine. It can actually match the lower prices um, that are happening in the economy. So we expect profits and incomes to be falling and that makes it harder to service debt. Debt is always a fixed value. So if you have a household with a mortgage, so a consumer with a mortgage, let's say, and that mortgage is 200,000 pounds, just because there is deflation doesn't change that value. Your mortgage, your loan to buy a house, is still 200,000 pounds, right? You still gotta pay that value off. But if your income is falling, it makes it harder to service that debt. And that's what we mean by the real value of debt rises. So it's harder to service debt for households, for consumers, but also for businesses if profits are falling and they've got debt. And what does that mean? It means that consumers and businesses become averse to taking on debt. And if they're not borrowing, there's not going to be as much consumer spending. There's not going to be as much investment. That hits AD again. AD reduces. That means lower growth and higher unemployment again. We get into this horrible deflationary spiral and bam, the economy really suffers as a result. So really, the consequences of deflation could be much worse than the consequences of inflation. Just look at Japan. Japan will tell you exactly that. Since the 1990s and their banking crisis, they've had continuous deflation. They found it really hard to get out of it. Greece, since their uh, recession in 2010, again, have had regular bouts of deflation for a long period of time. Deflation from the demand side can be very, very dangerous. The key is that if it's anticipated, bam, you get these problems. Whereas short-term deflation is very beneficial. You get the benefits I mentioned at the start. Lower prices for consumers means they can simply buy at cheaper prices, improve their living standards, their purchasing power goes up. And for businesses, they can buy inputs at lower prices, reducing costs of production, widening their profit margins. That's if deflation is short-term and not anticipated. And really, that's the key thing to take away. When is deflation good? When is deflation bad? It's all dependent on whether deflation is anticipated or not. Anticipated deflation, yikes, ugh, bad news. And also we can talk about the cause. Remember, that is not a guarantee, but usually we say demand-side deflation is bad news, supply-side deflation maybe not so bad because of the long-term anticipated nature here and the short-term unanticipated nature here. Man, that's some interesting stuff. Hopefully you enjoy that quality stuff to take in. Bear that in mind and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.